Good morning year two, it is now Friday, which means it is time to complete your Minion Mathletics. So please have a go at the questions that I've uploaded for you onto the Google Classroom and submit your answers via the Google form. The next part of the video, I'm going to be giving you some support with your Doodle task. As last week, we looked at addition and subtraction facts to 20, but this week we're going to make it a little bit more tricky and we're going to move on to addition and subtraction facts all the way up to 100. So watch the next part of the video carefully as I'm going to be showing you how to use your, your knowledge that you've learned already and how to use our knowledge of commutativity to help us with our addition and subtraction skills. So Watch this next part of the video carefully and when you're feeling confident, please have a go at completing your doodle task. Let's have a recap of how we can use commutativity to help us solve number problems. So remember, commutative means that the order in which the addition is performed makes no difference to the answer. However, this doesn't work for subtraction and I will show you why. So... If I have a simple question like 2 add 3, which I know equals 5, I can switch the numbers around. So I can do 3, add 2, and the answer would still be 5. However, if I did a subtraction sum like 5 subtract 2 equals 3, that is fine. But if I wanted to swap the numbers round and do five, 2 subtract 5, it would not give me the answer 3. So subtraction is not commutativity, commutative, whereas addition, we can swap the numbers round and it will not affect the answer. And we can use this for numbers up to 100. So let's have a go at some examples. So when you're looking at addition and subtraction facts to 100, try and spot some patterns. So I'm going to start you off. If I have 5 add 10, I know it's 15. If I add 5 add 20, I know that it's going to be 10 is only 10 is only 10 less than 20. So effectively, I'm only adding an extra 10 to 15, like so. So if I have patterns like this, I know that 30 is only 10 more than 20. So 25 add another 10 is 35. So there is a pattern. It, the answers are going up in tens. We can use our knowledge of commutativity to help us with this as well. So, for example, if I have 5 add 50, which I know is 55, if I saw another question that had 50 add 5, I know that the answer will still be 55. And then with subtraction sums, say if I had 55 subtract 5, my answer will be 50. And I can move some of the numbers around, but I cannot move the 55. Remember the 55 in subtraction, the bigger number always has to go at the start. So I can also write 55 subtract 50 and it will give me 5. So when you're solving addition and subtraction problems to 100, try and spot some patterns, try and use your knowledge of commutativity and think about, oh, if these numbers were swapped the other way around, what would my answer be? So here, this question might have seemed a little bit tricky. You can turn the questions round, if it's addition, to, to make sure that you still get the same answer. So here, it might have been seemed a bit tricky. Oh, I can't do 5 add 50 in my head. But if you swap it round to 50 add 5, it seems a little bit easier. So try and spot some patterns in the addition and subtraction facts and 
use your knowledge of commutativity to help you solve them. And good luck with your doodle task.